Welcome to Mind Pump. This is the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is a Q&A episode. This is where we answer questions asked by listeners like you. But the way we open the episode is with a 40-minute introductory portion. This is where we talk about current events. We talk about what happens in our lives. Sometimes we mention our sponsors. So here's the breakdown of this podcast. We start out by talking about Mother's Day. Uh, we're recording this episode the day after Mother's Day, so we kind of talk about what happened on that day. Then we talk about uh, how Adam made protein pancakes up in Truckee for his family for Mother's Day. Now, these are pancakes made with Organifi protein powder. So rather than just eating cake, <laughs> you got the protein in there also. Uh, Organifi is one of our sponsors. They make organic supplements, um, protein powder being one of them. If you go to Organifi.com, that's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Mind Pump and use the code Mind Pump, you'll get 20% off any of their uh, their, their products. Um, we also talked about vitamin D and how uh, some studies are showing that vitamin D deficiencies or low levels of vitamin D are now being strongly correlated to terrible symptoms from COVID. We already know that low vitamin D levels increases your odds of getting uh, the flu or other respiratory diseases. Mm. Now, one thing about vitamin D, it's a fat-soluble vitamin. So that means it gets stored in your body. So if your vitamin D levels are good, taking some uh, as a supplement may not be a good idea. So how do you know if you should take vitamin D or not? Well, you get a blood test. Normally, you go to your doctor and you they prescribe. You go to the lab and you get a blood test. Or you can do a test at home. Everly Well is a company that makes at-home tests. They do hormone tests. They do allergy tests. They also do vitamin tests like the vitamin T test, the vitamin D test that I did uh, a couple weeks ago. So with Everly Well, you go on their website, you order one of the tests. If you use our code, they get you get 25% off. You do the test at home and you just mail it in. All right. So here's how you get 25% off. Go to everlywell.com. That's E-V-E-R-L-Y-W-E-L-L.com and use the code MINDPUMP and we'll get 25% off any of the tests on their site. Uh, then we talked about Elon Musk, his interview on the Joe Rogan podcast and Neuralink. Uh, Justin brought up a new show on YouTube called The Age of AI. Fantastic show. We talked about how Tesla is leaving California. Mm -hmm. I talked about the bad food relationships that offensive linemen in the sports ball game of football uh, tend to get. <laughs> uh Justin talked about the humping hound. Yeah, yeah it's kind of weird. Yeah, it's happening. And I talked about how low reps and high reps tend to require different uh, set allocations in your workouts. Then we answered the fitness questions. So here's the first one. This person wants to know if uh, it, it makes a difference if you did 10,000 steps all in one shot or if you spread it throughout the day. Like, are there benefits to doing one or the other? The next question, this person wants to know if essential amino acids – and branched chain amino acids are worth the money. Like, do they do anything for you or are they a waste of time? The next question, this person wants to know how our wives are currently working out. Apparently, they checked out our wives and thought they were hot, so now they want to know how we're how <laughs> they're working exactly out. That's exactly what happened. You creeps. Yeah. Uh, and the final question, this one's in honor of Mother's Day. What is one thing that each of our mothers instilled in us when we were young that we're grateful for today? Love you, Mom. Uh, also... This month, one of our best at-home workout programs, MAPS Starter, is 50% off. Now, here's what you need to follow this program. A stability ball and dumbbells. That's it. And you can train your entire body. Now, this program is great for beginners because it gets you started on how to balance, how to increase stability, strengthen your body. But it's also good for intermediate and advanced people. Every once in a while, it's a good idea to visit a program that gets you to really focus on your balance, technique, and form for at least six to, tw to 10 weeks so you can go back to your regular workouts and get past those plateaus that you're in. So anyway, this program is 50% off. Here's how you get that discount. Go to mapsstarter.com. That's M-A-P-S-S-T-A-R-T-E-R.com and use the code STARTER50. That's S-T-A-R-T-E-R-5-0, -E no space for the discount. And it's t-shirt time. Oh, shit, Doug. You know it's my favorite time of the week. Oh, yeah. We only have two winners today. Very light reviews. For mm -hmm. iTunes, we have mm -hmm. Lee Harvey Teabag. And for Facebook, we have R.C. Liley. Both of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. 
Include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. You guys have a good Mother's Day or what? Happy Mother's Day. Yeah. Was, yeah. We love the moms. What'd you guys all do? What happened? What'd you, what'd you do, Mills. Justin? How did you make your mom and wife feel special uh, on Mother's Day? Well, okay. So Courtney actually has been really getting into uh, learning new recipes, and she's getting really excited about um, you know exploring options with food and stuff and like how to make things healthier. And so... I got a really cool cookbook for her that uh, you know has like a ton of these these recipes and everything. So that was that was a hit. It was more of like I I'm paying attention to like her interests right now, and mm-hmm. I was like trying to. Feel, it wasn't like here cook me food. I was gonna you say, know? isn't that like getting your wife like a vacuum? <laughs> I know. It, it felt like that a little bit, but like it was you know it was an expensive cookbook. Hey. So <laughs> it's, it, a, it's, a, it's an expensive vacuum. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> here, make me food. Yeah. yeah. I know. I felt kind of like that, but she was really excited about that and i got her like uh uh it was funny because like i got her something that was like totally not like what i would have normally in terms of like i want to get her something sexy you know like like wear something around the house sexy i got her like this total this jumper thing that was all like really comfortable and like something she could wear because and, and not feel like a total scrub being around the house all the time in sweats so it's kind of like wearing sweats but like the nicer version of it so anyway sounds like you give her a couple of gifts for you <laughs> yeah. Here, that, babe, that's what i do make some <laughs> make some food to look sexy yeah. <laughs> happy mother's day dude it's really like it's that and then and then me taking over like just the the entire day like letting her sleep you know yeah. as long as she wants like I don't know, dude. What, what the fuck else am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bail, like, bail out now. No! Bail out now. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Well, I'm, I'm sure so, she, I'm so romantical. No, like, I'm sure she yeah. liked it. It reminds me of my she dad. She loved it. My dad did something like that years ago. i never forget. My dad, it was Mother's Day, and he's not the kind to think about like what to get. or He's old school, you know what I mean? So he, yeah. like, he's like, I'm going to go get her a present by myself. You know what I mean? <laughs> so he goes out and he comes it's back. A real risk. And he comes back with a vacuum. Yeah. No, he really did. He did, and wow. he, and but it, he was like he was trying to be thoughtful, and he goes, you know, I heard you, I hear you talking about how bad the vacuum is and how well it, and how much it doesn't work. Yeah. So I got you like one of the best ones or whatever. Like, and I remember even as a twelve year old boy, I remember seeing <laughs> going, that going like, ooh, dad. yeah, and I was like, yeah, ah. yeah not a yeah, good move. I don't know if that was the move, dad. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. we went up to that place that you've been. Talking oh about yes, for. I totally forgot to ask you about yeah. that. How did you like it? Gorgeous. It is. Gorgeous. We got this this uh, room. It's like a cottage almost, like a suite, and it's literally on the beach. Literally. Yeah. Like you go out onto awesome. your little patio area or whatever, mm-hmm. and you hear the ocean, and I did some writing. We totally relaxed, so that was part of the the Mother's Day gift or whatever. And then I also got her, have you guys seen those like baby books when you have a child that it tells you like, you know, you put a picture of your baby when they were born, and this was the first- your first favorite the, the, food. The wristband you cut and put in there. Yeah, the yeah. whole, like, this yeah, was, yeah, yeah. you know, you and your mom, you know, me and your mom like when we were babies. Book. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so it was a really nice, so I got her one of those, too. Oh, that's cool. So, we had, yeah, we had a, a, a really good time. And then, you know, my mom, I got her, I went on, uh, God, what's that? Etsy. You guys ever been on that site? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I so uh, I'm sorry. That's just one of those, like, <laughs> it's just like a cesspool for buying a bunch of trinkets that you don't need in your house. You know what I mean? Just, I'm just saying. Like a, this is like an old grumpy man. I know. I know. <laughs> we went on a hike. I mean, there was a lot more to the story, but, you know. Uh, Bro, it's all good. You get redeemed. It's fine. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. Keep <laughs> going. Yeah. Anyway, I went on there for my mom, and we, I found this this necklace. That you can put uh, birthstones on it. So I put birthstones of all of my mom's grandkids in order of oldest Aww. to youngest. And then the last one was the baby that's coming. So I put that little birthstone. God, what, says, a, what a good husband and yeah, son you are. You know what I mean? I feel like I should take notes from you guys. No. <laughs> But no, hey, careful, bro. No, don't say, don't good, say you guys yet. I haven't yeah, gone yeah. yet. All right. All right. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see how Adam's yeah, doing. Yeah. Well, hey, <laughs> doing look, over there. you're still married. I got divorced the first time. Let's <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just Damn it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, take yeah. a step back. All right. All right, all right. You pump, don't want to listen to me exactly yeah, all pump, the time. Pump your brakes. I don't know. Yeah, you're but, doing well right now. Yeah. What about what about you, Adam? What'd you uh, well we were all up at the the Truckee house, right? So we went up there with Katrina's family. Um that was a lot of people? 
Yeah, yeah. We have, well, her family, right? So her family's big, right? Sure, so sure. you know, we filled the house up for sure. And whenever we do uh, stuff like that, I, I love one of the things I love that her family does, and they, they started this tradition uh, with me. I don't know, probably five, six years ago. We every year we we all go, and normally it's around uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. We go to somewhere and rent a house for normally a week or whatever. And what they do is they assign because there's so many of us. You have a a a meal that you are responsible for bringing everything for it. You're responsible for preparing it. You're responsible for cleaning the oh, yeah, kitchen. That's what we did when we went. Yeah. When you guys were with us. Yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah. that's something we always do. And I just love that. It makes what I, cause then I know that, okay, this morning I have breakfast and I've got to cook and clean. And then other than that, I ain't got to do shit around keeping the house up or, and you don't feel guilty about not helping somebody clean. It's like, that's, it's your day. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. your day. It's your meal. You handle yeah. it. Um, so I, you know, I had a mother's day breakfast with, uh, you know, uh, Jalen and Jasmine. So the three of us, uh, prepared, uh, protein pancakes. Well, that's funny. You know, today was an Organifi commercial. I totally could have just slid that commercial in there. Yeah. They, we had, <laughs> I, I did, well, do it now. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah well, I, forgo- I, forgo- I forgot today was a yeah. commercial for them, and we actually so. And my Mother's Day breakfast was uh, the protein pancakes. So we uh, we used that powder in there for protein pancakes, and then we had potatoes and bacon. How many? And now how many scoops per? Like how much? So how I do it. I, I do a two to one ratio. So whatever, uh, and I, I forget what. Um, you know, uh, what do you call it? Pancake mix that Katrina, you, what brand it was. So, you know, sue me. You can use any brand. Mm-hmm. And then whatever ratio of the, the flour uh, batter mix I use. So I go two to one. So one protein scoop for that. Oh, and any see. more than that. Like, so when Katrina and I are home, we may push it to like one and a half to, to, to two to two or whatever. So one to one ratio. But then it has a little bit stronger protein taste and a little chalkier, and we know we're serving a bunch of people that are- You, you put your fork in and just powder? Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't mind. It's still good to me. And so when Katrina makes them for me at home, and we and what we do is so we- And I did this too. So I sliced up uh, strawberries, blueberries, bananas, and I put them in the pancakes. So you had like either banana or strawberry or blueberry pa- protein pancakes. And we did like half the amount of protein mix than we would do at our house. So you do people, vanilla or chocolate? Vanilla. vanilla. I think yeah. vanilla, vanilla just- blends the best. It I does. Mean. I think mm. vanilla just does better with uh, mixing things like pancakes and stuff like that because mm, yeah. they already kind of have that flavor to it, I think. So yeah, that's what we, we made them uh, all, all the mom's breakfast. And of course, they didn't have to do anything. Uh, Katrina and I went on a really nice bike ride. For her mom and her, I had um, a really nice- uh, framed picture. So you know that picture that I took. I think I shared it on Max's page of Katrina and Max on the beach. Just a really yeah. good, It's a really beautiful day on the yeah, beach, yeah, yeah. and it's just a, it's a recent photo of Max and her. So I, I I did one for. There's a couple different shots I got. I got one that I I gave to her, and one that I gave to her mom that I framed really nice, and then and then presented that to them. And then, like I said, the rest of the day, Katrina and I kind of hung it. We kept her from having to do anything and, and made sure that everyone was helping out with Max. And then her and I went for a bike ride. And so that was kind of her Mother's Day. So that's what it was. That's nice. nice. Yeah. How was it up there in Truckee? Oh, dude, it was absolutely gorgeous. Oh, bro, you got to tell me about the bear. Oh, yeah. Yeah, was, dude. Is that real? Yes. Yes. Massive, dude. I mean, we were talking about this. The You know, we've been up there a bunch of times now. I'm not cool with this. <laughs> You're <laughs> such a scaredy cat, dude. They're for, dude, yeah. All I can do is make a lot of loud noise. Yeah, they're, I mean, the they're, most part. they're afraid of humans, dude. I got they're chased not, by a bear, dude. They're not, a they're not, remember? <laughs> they're not messing with oh, you. Yeah. And the only time I would be afraid is if they, if, you know, it, mother bear and it had like two cubs and I was near, like that would kind of worry me because I know they can get very protective of their cubs. But otherwise, black bears are normally really scared of you. So if you make a bunch of noise, they go. And he, now, were you outside? And then it just. So Katrina and their family were sitting around the fire, and and it was it, like like I'd say dusk, so it was still light outside, very light outside. And they were sitting around the fire. I was in the living room. I just happened to be walking through the living room. You know where our big picture windows are, mm-hmm. so you could see the the golf courts and everything. And all of a sudden, I see this bear just fucking flying, massive too, big old one, just hoofing right through the right through the golf course. And I was like, oh, my eyes lit up. And then I looked at them out by the fire. They had all seen it. And they were like pointing. And they're like, did you see that? I said, yeah, no, I saw them. I said, I guess we do have some wildlife out here. <laughs> we're looking for some trash. The yeah, only man. the only thing that I, the only knock that I have of uh, our place up there is, well, it's not the place, it's just the uh, being up there. My skin gets so dry, dude. So my psoriasis is just like, 
on a whole nother level up there. It's, yeah, it's, it's super dry. Up there. Yeah, I mean, you guys feel it, right? You yeah. feel your lips get dry and your yeah. your throat. I'm not usually a lotion guy. I'm like super lotion up there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so lathering for, constantly. For me, with my psoriasis, it just gets it's ten times worse up there. That's the only downfall. Yeah. Do you, now, are you still doing the the vitamin D supplements? And here's you know what funny you bring that up because I'm good about it when I'm home. I, I have to be better about traveling with my vitamin mm -hmm. D, especially when I know that I'm going up there because I know it's going to make it worse anyway. So I didn't while I was up there. So Yeah, because it's connected, strongly connected to uh, psoriasis. Yeah, no, you're the one that turned me on to that in the first place. Now, the last time you tested your vitamin D, wh <clears throat> where were you in the range? So I forget how Everly Well does their scoring because their scoring is different than like a- But they'll give you a range. Yeah, yeah. So I was on, uh, well, when I tested, so check this out, I was actually taking- uh, 5,000, I think is a pill. Yeah. yeah 5,000. 5, I was taking 5,000 IUs and I tested with the, uh, the, uh, every well test and I still was a low, mm. like I wasn't even in the normal range. So I was below the normal range with taking 5,000 IUs. So now I take 10,000 IUs and I know to caution someone listening, uh, I, one, I'm not a doctor. I'm not telling people to go out. If you have psoriasis that you should take 10,000 IUs of vitamin D. You, I recommend that you get tested and figure it out. Because I know that I was really low, so I take that much. And that's why it's so important to test because uh, vitamin D is fat soluble. So if you if your if your D levels are high, and you supplement, that's not good for you either. Mm -hmm. If they're low, um, and you're supplementing with say five thousand IU's, and it's not enough to get it up, then you you would probably need to take more. So that's why testing is so important. It's not like a water soluble viable vitamin that you could just you know like vitamin C. I could take five thousand milligrams. And aside from maybe possible stomach upset, my body gets rid of what it doesn't need with something like vitamin. You know what else they found with vitamin D? Mm. In fact, a very strong correlation to low vitamin D and severe symptoms from the COVID-19 uh, virus. Do you think that's what's connected to the whole homeless thing that, that we were talking with Dr. Drew about? Yeah, so that's interesting. I thought about that because so for if you haven't listened to that episode, we interviewed Dr. Drew about the homeless crisis in California. And at the end of the, towards the end of the episode, I asked him, you know, because because the homeless population you would think is the perfect storm for a virus to go through and just ravage, right? They're yeah. unhealthy. Uh, many of them drugs. Uh, they're uh, on the street, dirty. I right? think it's low immunity. You'd think. You think, right? And he's like, yeah. He goes, they they're not getting. There's a lower instance of COVID among the homeless population. Than there are amongst, and he said the ones that are, are like asymptomatic, right? Yeah, so yeah, not yeah. only are they already lower, but then even the small percentage that have are asymptomatic. Yeah, but then again, they are outside all the time, and yeah. so and, and they again with respiratory illness like the flu, um, if your vitamin D levels are low, your odds of getting uh, you know severe symptoms are higher. One of the theories, there's a lot of factors, but one of the theories that I've read about as to why there's even a flu season to begin with has to do with vitamin D levels, where in the winter, you're just not getting as much sun. If you're kind of low, it's enough to get you below a certain level, and then you you know, you know get effect. I just sent in uh, my vitamin D Everly Well test. Oh, is that what you took? I so did. You did, the, you did vitamin D. I got the allergy one, which, by the way, I haven't taken mine yet, but I need to. Yeah. And then just I just yeah I just did mine. You got for the, the pregnancy metals. one. Which one did you? Get? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no heavy metals. I wanted to, to see like if there was any toxic metal, uh, you know, like Into levels. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I drink tap water and everything, and I don't know. Like I was just That's curious. A good question. Yeah, I was just curious about it. So I I I figured they have a whole host of different tests, and uh, obviously too, I thought it'd be kind of funny because I want to see how metal I really am. That is the real just to brag. I was. You know? I was searching for that because I knew that was, I was like, why the fuck do you take a heavy metal test? I mean, I got the hard Dude, allergies. I'm so much more metal than you guys. Yeah. You know, I just want to say that. The test is going to come yeah. back. It's heavy. Yeah, it's super it's heavy super, metal. Super heavy. Like, yes, but that means I'm dying. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you have high heavy metals in your in your system, then you have to you have to get them out. It'd be toxic. Yeah, exactly. You know, and they they give you kind of vague symptoms. I think sometimes like general like yeah. shitty symptoms. Autoimmune kind of yeah, yeah symptoms. No, because I supplement with uh, vitamin D every day. I do five thousand to ten thousand every day, and I have for a long time. I test regularly because I don't want it to go too high. If I uh, see it gets too high, then I'll lower my dose. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. otherwise, I'll keep it. And it's just we don't get enough sun, dude. Yeah. That's just the bottom line. I mean, we feel it all the time being cooped up in this uh, studio even. So. Nobody gets enough sun. Yeah. Think about it this way. Humans evolved getting a lot of sun. 
Like, no way we were in caves as much as we are indoors nowadays. There's right. no way. I agree. Yeah. We're just outside all the time, and so the, the vitamin D levels have to be... By the way, cholesterol, dietary cholesterol helps your body synthesize uh, vitamin D. Did you know yeah. that? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So it's one of Which the, we've been told to avoid forever. Yeah, so, I know. Yeah. Crazy. All these factors against us. Yeah. Hey, I listened to um, a little bit of the Elon Musk episode uh, with Rogan. Yeah. How far did you get? I, I listened another to one? halfway through. Second one. Yeah. Six, oh, six. I didn't know he did a second one. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's a, he's, uh, he's weird. It's even more awkward. Yeah. I think. He's, he's really I, awkward. Do you remember we just last time we yeah. were talking we had this debate and oh. I was like, come on, dude, he's he, it's awkward. Bro, well, because he was- he's asking him about Neuralink because like they're getting pretty close to you know testing it with humans and whatnot. Like he speculates what another year from now or something, but. They're going to start, which which is interesting. I didn't know that this was the approach uh, first, was that they were going to try to like help to to heal brain injuries first. So that's like their first uh, iteration is is to start with um, basically they like bore out a part of the skull and then they they replace it with this this microchip mm. and that way like the the little wires are like neurons like they're they're and, and so they can connect and basically restore uh, some functions like say like I like hearing loss like eyesight like a paralysis like things like that they can target by reconnecting, uh, you know, this neural link there. Wow. Really the, interesting. Yeah, I hope that doesn't go bad. Well, yeah. I mean, I, it's going to be a while, I yeah. think, before people like... But that's the thing is they're... they're he, he's going to start with more of, uh, you know, real serious brain injury type uh, uh, people to, to experiment with first. They're so. going to give you two options. This The first one is more expensive. The second one comes with ads. So yeah. you're going you're to hear again, but yeah. every 15 yeah. minutes. You get an well, ad. You're going to hear it's a not, commercial. Yeah, so I, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was interested in that because it's like he was pitching it forever as like this this way to to interface with the internet and like become like this super human almost you know because of you'd be able to like have access to to uh, well, information so right quick. that I mean he he alluded to that in the first one yeah. right talking yeah. about how close we are Dude, I mean we have no idea what that will do to the human psyche we have no idea at all Dude like overload it might just crash the whole system or you know? like, or, or I mean imagine yeah, I certainly won't be one of the first I no. Know. no. Oh, even dude. he won't. I mean, he even admitted it. Like Joe, like kind of was like, "Oh, so when are you gonna like plant this in your head?" And he's like, "Well, we'll see how this goes with the, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the you know the brain injury people first. Dude, probably his kid. Yeah, yeah. You know? Have you seen the memes uh, surrounding his kid being born? <sighs> Where like they have like like yeah. uh, like robots that are you know, <laughs> father. Uh, uh, what is this emotion thing? Don't yeah. worry, I know because he named him a weird yeah. name and did yeah, all yeah. that stuff. A E dash twelve A. He's a very. I still think I'd be best friends with him if I met him. Yeah. Weird as hell whatever but he's right. a super i love the dude well it, you, it definitely sparked for me like more uh interest I'm, i mean i'm very much into the whole sci-fi and like wh- where we're going with everything and uh, I, I stumbled across this show it's like a youtube original uh what's it called the story of ai or like a, a, a age, age of ai, of, age of AI. Yeah. so uh, uh what's his name robert downey jr is the one the host for it so he, he does the whole like um iron man kind of a, a presentation thing where you have all the graphics and everything but they explain where AI currently is right now. And it's like, it's they're learning to emulate what we already know and do. And so there's Oof. all these different segments where one of them was with uh, Will I Am, you know, the, the guy from the yeah. Black Peas. Yeah. He's trying to create this digital version of himself. So basically all his you all his um like social media accounts and everything, like he can have this avatar answering everybody just like he would, and he looks just like it. So the guy that like came up with this technology was working with uh, Avatar and all these like, you know, super CGI uh, uh, movies and then kind of created his own business to then incorporate AI into this like real realistic digital version of yourself what? that like answers. So he, it's crazy. Where dude. is this show? This sounds, I want to watch the show. Dude, it's so fast. But where do you watch it? What it, is it? It's YouTube. It's YouTube TV. Oh, I don't have that. Yeah, but That's you can the- still go on YouTube and you can get the first couple uh, episodes uh, just to try it out. So I highly suggest it. It's really fascinating. Dude, I want to check this out so bad. Doug yeah. just pulled up the, the yeah. trailer right here. Yeah. Did you guys watch that? Uh, what was that movie I kept telling you guys was really awesome? And it was about this dude who had a computer chip in his brain. It was on Amazon. And then he's like all of a sudden a badass. Mm. What was that movie called? Anyway, in it, remember. it was really, really well made. And it was interesting because people had upgrades like that. And so like... You know, I can only see so far, but imagine if you have an upgrade mm-hmm. where just effortlessly I could zoom 
a hundred. Oh, you know, yeah. I could see how far, or I could hear it's like that Black Mirror episode, how far or whatever. Yeah. Or I remember everything. Like, well, the contact lens to do that is already out, right? I, I think I shared that like uh, last year, sometime, or s- at least six plus months ago. Yeah, all kinds yeah. of so creeps. it's a it's a contact lens. You put a contact lens in, and then it has the ability to zoom like freaking like a mile away or whatever. Right, That's or you trip. got a drone flying, and you could see through the drone in one eye, and then see you know where you're what? at right now. Yeah, yeah they yeah. have that too. What? See, it's, it's, and this is what I'm saying. We have no it's idea. Just getting weird. Remember, humans evolved with a, a particular, like our brain and how it works. You're going to change that radically. It's going to get yeah, weird. Yeah, but when you say things like that, don't you, do, isn't there a part of you that also sounds just like your great grandpa? Yeah. Who said that when like yeah. television came out? And Automobile. Like, that's different than than going into <laughs> Why? your brain. Well, okay, c- kind of, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Like you, they probably thought the TV was going to melt. They used to say it used to melt your brain. Mm-hmm. That's what they thought. So mm-hmm. it, it for them it wasn't that much more it's not that much more radical than what we were already used to, so I always I always try and catch myself when I start saying that because I'm like fuck am I that old guy now yeah. who's just gonna resist what's gonna well, come okay. no matter what? Let me what. give you an example. Let's okay. Let's just speculate. This will be fun, right? Okay. One thing that we've always 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 had to deal with as self aware uh, creatures is our own uh, mortality. We've always had to deal with this. Yeah. We know that we will die. This is actually what makes us human. Okay, so imagine now you know that you'll never die. You know that you can live forever. Think about how radically this is going to change well, how you I think about things. I don't know if I don't think it's going to change that, but I, I mean, huh? talking about the show Upload, I think is really cool. The idea, uh, the, that's the, a great show, man. It, the good. idea that you you could upload your consciousness and you could get like and they can use AI to basically predict what this yeah. you know digital version of you that's kind of cool you know I think that's kind of neat and I, I always refer back to talking about my dad right because as a, as somebody who lost their father at an early age we don't have a lot of photos I don't have a lot of footage if there was this AI version of him because there was all this stuff that we were there, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd ha- at least have some sort of way to communicate with him. I don't know. Just that's well, interesting to me. I, I guess I hadn't really thought about this and put it all together, but on the show, Will I Am was talking about um, like how he was trying to be a, be more of an owner of his data and like how all these companies exist to basically like figure out uh, who you are, your tendencies, your likes, your uh, you know where you go, like what you how you interact to people, even through your emails, like what you say, like so they're p- compiling mm. all of that yeah. to then cr- create their you know like sell that to eventually to to an AI company that's going to use that in mm. some degree. Well, let's say you do make uh, like you said earlier, you are able to make a copy of yourself who now becomes your assistant or works for you. Mm-hmm. How much of a copy is it going to be? Because if I literally made an identical copy to myself, I would tell myself to fuck off. <laughs> what? You know what I'm saying? If, let me put it this what, way. What, what, what you mean? Imagine if you made a perfect <laughs> copy you of yourself. Yeah, yeah. You, made a, you made a perfect copy of yourself. You're like, hey, I just made you. You're going to go do all this work for me. Thank you. You would tell you. You could... Oh, you mean you my, can fuck off? You mean, a, you, mean oh, AI, I you mean AI version with yeah, you? Yeah, if you, you made a perfect copy with you, yeah, you, yeah. you why do you like, get, wait a minute? Why am I doing everything? Why oh, do you get all the fun that. stuff? Why yeah. do I have to do all the bullshit? That's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter. You're AI, dude. Your computer. That's what. Hey, I'm the real deal. Oh no, dude. that's part of it. it reminds yeah. me of that Black Mirror episode where they made like their personal assistant, <laughs> yeah. and it was it was them, and then they controlled them in their phone or whatever, and they're like, oh, you don't want to do what I say? No problem. And then they pause it for like 10 minutes but for the person for the ai experience was like six months yeah. of total isolation that i'll do anything you say that's fucked up man. i mean oh, I, i've seen a lot of versions of this too where like yeah you, you do that like you put your consciousness in another like robot or whatever yeah. like like and then that one's like no i want to be the real one and yeah. then kills you yeah yeah i just think that this is going to go to the the theory i would kill me <laughs> <laughs> you want me to do well you're not working <laughs> I, like I figure out how to kill myself. Stop. Yeah, you know dude, what I'm saying? So many Stop warnings it. about this. Yeah. There is going to be, I think there's going to be a very even split. There's going to be uh, the unplugged and plugged in. There's going to be people that- The are, unplugged, like live underground. I don't think know? it's- No. Ugly, got crooked I, teeth. Not at all. I think unplugged will- <laughs> No. We're not perfect. <laughs> no, dude. Yeah, yeah. Unplugged will look a lot like my weekend this weekend. You know, up there, it doesn't even look like COVID's going on. It's just every, every, you see people walking by, you don't see people wearing masks. Yeah. It's just, you're out in nature. You don't see people staring at phones all the time. I just think it'll be like that. I think it'll be like people that are in 
nature and are not mm. connected to their phones and televisions and pads. Oh, iPads. I hear what you say. I thought you meant that you'll have some people who are completely reject to that stuff, completely reject it, and then the other side that becomes a part of it. I can only imagine the unplugged. Yeah. You know, we still have genetic, you know, problems. Well, yeah. we're still we, you know, we're not perfect or whatever. See, and then what happens when you get a digital virus that that kills off like all these Neuralink people? Yeah. You know, and then the rest of the ones that didn't do it, yeah. you know, have to take over and yeah. rebuild. Quick unplug. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Anyway, but but Elon on there uh, on that podcast back to that, he said he was going to he's selling everything. Apparently, he wants to sell. Oh yeah. Most of his possessions. Everything, or is he just trying to get out of California? The, the article no, no. I read, he was trying to leave California. Well, his, Two separate his things. estates, too. Like his, his, what? Uh, yeah. His, He's going to rent. Houses. He's going to rent. He wants to get rid of everything because he says that uh, his possessions are a, a vector for attack. In other words, people come after him and say, well, you own all this stuff or whatever. He also says it weighs him down. So he wants to not own much stuff, which I think is uh, is pretty cool coming from somebody who has the money to own most. He's a things. billionaire. That's yeah. it. That's interesting. It's weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, why? Uh, see now, what would scare me? I would definitely have at least a compound somewhere, because I don't know. Just we keep we. There's more and more of us, and less and less space. Uh, right. I, I think property is is uh, going to be hard to come by, especially in areas that are desirable. Right. Yeah. If you want to be somewhere near the water or something like that, or nice areas or near work, like to find a a place to live could be really well, difficult think about in 20, this way. 30 years. Well, think about it this way. When you're a billionaire, one of your problems might be that you have a lot of stuff. That might actually be a challenge. Too distracting, yeah. Not only just distracting, but he's right. It weighs you down. You get defined by it. Mm. You know, it feels complicated or whatever. You want to just kind of be free. You know what I mean? So sell it all. So I can, I can kind of understand what he's talking about. And oh. then the other part was you said... Uh, what you're talking about, Adam, I read that article too, how he's taking Tesla out of California. Well, now, that is that makes sense to me. Is that happening? Because that was all because of, they told him they couldn't go back to work, right? Yeah, so that's he, because- He's like, F you, I'm he, out. This was like the last month. Yeah, they were just like, nope, you still can't do production. Yeah, he said, he, well, hey, look, it's his right to do it. And I'm not going to lie, California is definitely not the easiest place to operate a How stupid are we as a business? state? We're, isn't that yeah. the only car- yeah, Isn't that, that was the only one left. That's yeah. the only one that that's actually manufactured in here, everywhere else. Yeah, yeah way to go. <sighs> yeah, that's all those people are being employed or moved to another state. I'm sure he'll probably get. I'm sure he'll probably get wooed by you know Texas <clears throat> or another place like that. To well, he's he's market. already in Texas. He's already in Nevada. Nevada. He'll just probably just double up, right? And just nobody... open out there. But it was because they told him that he can't uh, he can't reopen. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he, even without because uh, he said he was going to put. You know, special uh, you know structures in place and practices yeah. to keep people. Now, did safe. Joe get into like because obviously uh, Elon has been one of the the you know famous voices that have been uh, talking against COVID this whole time? Did he get into that with him? He got into it a little bit in terms of like what he's put on Twitter and how people responded to it and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so they talked about that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Hey, I, I was reading some sports ball stuff. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> so, so you guys would like that? <laughs> okay. Well, what were you reading? Actually, so there was an article. I'm listening. You know, yeah. I should find where it is so people can. We'll put it in the show notes, right? It, it's about, it, it's from the point of view from uh, offensive linemen, right? <clears throat> and they're talking about how unhealthy of a relationship that they, they create with food because of the amount of weight that to they need it, to yeah. gain. Mm -hmm. One of the guys was talking about how he would make a shake with grits uh, peanut butter, milk, chicken. It was like the most high calorie, disgusting thing you think of. Yeah. And he would drink it because chewing became so tiresome for him. And he'd have to consume 7,000 calories a day to get his weight up to where they wanted, which yeah. he needed to be over 300 pounds. You know what's interesting about that? This topic you're bringing up, I've always found it kind of interesting that after the first time I read this, that you know, you know, the average life expectancy of someone who played in the NFL, I think, for five years or more. It's the, definitely under 60, right? It's 55. That's wow. crazy. So that's and that's an average of all of them. So that throws the punter in there. That throws the guy who's who <laughs> sat the bench. It <laughs> the throws punter the, lives the longest. Yeah, well, yeah well, I mean, of no, he does. seriously. It, it, and you got to know that the people that are bringing that average down the most are the longest. Mm -hmm. because I think today's average lineman is like 100 pounds heavier than just like two decades ago. Yeah, those uh, habits and then, you know, not having that kind of rigorous activity, like just cutting that off. And now what? It's like you're going to maintain this high calorie diet. Like even when you're trying to cut it Dude. down, it's just done so much damage. So to I, messed, I messed up the shake. So here's what he made. Seven scrambled eggs, a tub of cottage cheese, grits, peanut butter, a banana, and Gatorade. And he blend it. 
Ugh. He'd oh, blend fuck. it and then drink it. And he says that he was constantly feel. Who is this guy that was talking? I should tell you guys what his name is. This uh, one was super famous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ben Barch. Yeah. I don't know. Ben Barch. He's know an Barch. offensive lineman. Yeah. So, okay. but he says that he constantly felt like he was uh, stuffed all the time. But he says the only way he could get his weight up to what they wanted. I mean, here's the thing. Sports are... Yeah, they're giants. Professional sports are anything but healthy, okay? You're pushing your body to the extreme, and football has to be one of the least healthy. It's one of the most dangerous, I would assume. Well, yeah. and then you throw in eating like that, too. Yeah. I mean, it's can't. crazy. And Justin's point, That's the, I mean, all the you know pro athletes that I've trained post their, their career, that's one of the hardest things is that they were so... For so many years, they were used to eating a certain way, and it's like, dude, you can't... You can't even come close. To Not that. even close to no. that. I mean, I, I know you what I have. I know what I've screwed. had to change just yeah. in the last few years. Uh, from not lifting and training as hard. I mean, they're lifting, training hard, and playing mm-hmm. at a whole other level. Uh, the amount of cal, and then trying to maintain a weight like that, just mm-hmm. you can't even be close to that. He says that uh, at one point, the, uh, one of the head coaches wanted to weigh him. This is when he first started. So he quickly went downstairs, grabbed two 10 pound weights, put them in the back of his pants. He had big sweats on mm-hmm. to try to make the weight that they needed. And then he says how later on, gaining weight wasn't a problem. Now, now it was too hard for him to be uh, at the right way. He was starting to get too overweight. Uh, yeah. And they started to charge. They, they, the NFL would fine him for every extra pound. You want to know how much he, he, he got fined? Yeah. A thousand bucks. For, per pound? Per pound wow, over the limit because they said that the, the his number was 338. Yeah. So any pound over that was a thousand bucks. But yeah, it's, 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 it's cool to hear them talk about how unhealthy it is for, you know, for them to follow this regime or whatever, but 7,000 calories a day, that's not easy. No, no. You know, it's hard to do that. I've done that. You remember when they came out with, did you ever read what uh, Michael Phelps was eating? Yeah. 10,000? 10,000. Yeah, Yeah, he had like a 10,000 calorie breakfast or something He had to go to McDonald's constantly just to keep it going. Oh, when you're you're eating that much food, so here's the thing that people need to understand. It's hard to eat. I know this. It's hard to eat over 3,000 calories of healthy food. Very difficult. Oh, yeah. You Very have to difficult. reach for the hyper palatable mm-hmm. crap because, you know, if I'm eating healthy food, it, it automatically satiates you. It's not hyper palatable. Now, it, and I'm sure there's people wondering, like, why would they do that? Why? And could, there is something to be said, though. Like, like, I think of Michael Phelps. It was probably advantageous for him to eat that much because then when he comes out, at least he didn't like destroy his metabolism. Because if you were only eating, 3,000 calories or 2,500 calories and burning as much as he's You wouldn't burning. be able to perform. Right. You wouldn't be able to perform. You'd slow your metabolism down like crazy. And then when you actually stop swimming, it'd be really easy to put on a ton of weight. At least in his case, if you got your body used to burning 10,000 calories and he just jumped and he stopped swimming like cold turkey, then and he, he could cut his calories mm-hmm. in half and still have 5,000 calories. You're, when you're yeah. training and eating to achieve a extreme level of performance, I don't care what we're talking about. It's no longer uh, balanced. It's no longer longevity or health. It's about maximum, maximum performance. So Michael Phelps, you know, the, the best uh, competitive swimmer of all time, I still think he has the record for the most gold medals. Oh, yeah, no. If I'm not mistaken. He has, he has the record for most gold medals, the record for the most Olympic medals. It was like... Doug can get this. I know. I just read this actually. It was it was so in a, they were talking about it in the book that I was reading, and I I want to say it's fourteen. Yeah, fourteen Olympic medals, and I, I can't. So dominant. Oh, just beyond. He's yeah. got, he's got all kinds of records. You know what's funny about about swimmers is that I, I remember it was a long time ago. I watched this show on like the like the best athletes, mm-hmm. and they were explaining how what makes somebody genetically what makes someone an excellent swimmer basically makes them terrible at any other sport. Mm. Have you guys? Do you guys have you guys heard of this? Mm. So what makes somebody, genetically speaking, a really, really good swimmer, like Michael Phelps, is really short legs, mm-hmm. really, really long arms, like like you know, comically long arms, a flat rib cage and torso, and so any other sport on mm-hmm. land. So you look like a boat. Yeah, you're yeah. exactly like yeah. a big canoe with wow. these twenty eight medals. Twenty eight medals he won. Twenty eight. Yeah. How many gold does? That's mind boggling. Maybe it was fourteen gold then. That's insane God. to me. Yeah, that's crazy. But yeah, I mean, he was in the pool. What? But then he seven probably, hours. Like day? you said, he probably sucks at everything else. Yeah. <laughs> How shitty is that? You're, yeah, see him a, run. you're an Olympic athlete. They yeah. get your ass kicked by all your buddies in every other sport. Oh, yeah. Basketball is <laughs> just getting dunked just getting every pumped. two you're, seconds. Yeah. You ever seen a picture of Michael Phelps standing next to the the fastest? I think it was marathon runner in the world. Have you ever seen that? Mm-mm. So the fat. So Michael Phelps is like way taller than this other dude who's one of the fastest distance runners. But their legs are the same length mm. because Michael Phelps' legs are so oh, short, yeah. 
and the the That's marathon trippy. the marathon runner's legs are so long. Yeah. So they had the same like their waist was like the same, <laughs> but then Phelps is like torso. Uh, it's just you know through the roof, dude. Speaking of dominance, uh, my little dog, you know, that I just got uh, the little uh, miniature dachshund. Yeah. Oh, he punks the big one, huh? Yeah. So he's just like, like constantly just like jumping on, you know, Arlo. And uh, it was funny because he just started, um, you know, getting a little bit randy these days. Started like humping everything. And like, like my youngest was playing with him and was looking up at me. And then I, like, his hand was down there. And all of a sudden, like, Finn started just humping his arm. <laughs> and, I was, uh-huh. and he's like, he's like, oh. And I was like, don't let him do that. You know, that's a, a, a dominance. Like he's humping you. And he, and then so that turned into a conversation I was I wasn't really ready to have. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, okay, so what? What? Like, what is humping, Dad? Like. What's, and then he's like, it's so I, I tried to like work my way out of it like real quick, you know, and I'm just like, oh, he just does that because he's trying to be alpha dog, whatever. And uh, it's kind of like when I'm wrestling with your mom <laughs> naked and you walk in. Dude, <laughs> like this just opened up a can of worms, right? <laughs> and so he's in my room. I, I hear him. He's like, well, I'm going to hump him back. And I was like, no, don't do that. <laughs> it's like, that's not, no, we don't do that, buddy. What? So yeah, the humping thing, the term now is coming up a lot more now ever since that. Dude, you used the wrong I'm word. So screwed, I remember when I was a kid, I remember my sister was like eight, maybe, and she comes inside all excited, you know, to, to my dad, right? Papa, papa, come outside. Look, look, the dog knows how to dance. And my dad's like, what? <laughs> so she goes dance. outside, and the dog grabs her leg and starts humping her, <laughs> and she's like dancing you now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, yeah, re- I remember my so good. I remember my dad having this look, and he grabs yeah. a hose. <laughs> you know, oh, he he's like, it. "Why did you spray him?" <laughs> yeah. That's a bad dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's That's the dance. naughty dance. Like, he's not trying to. Dance. Yeah, it's yeah. funny because he asks Corey, "He's like, is this humping mom?" He started doing it in the air, oh, and no. she's like, "No, I think he's your hips more." <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. Anyway, dude, I had a uh, this morning. I had a great workout. I'm feeling like I, you know how I avoided squats for a long time. Yeah, mm-hmm. coming back. Coming Feel back, good. yeah, uh, I'm feeling, yeah. I'm feeling good again. And you know, I was thinking about uh, how we tend to apply <laughs> low reps and high reps to our workouts and sets. And I thought this would be an interesting point to bring up on the show. Typically, if you're working for strength and you're doing low repetitions, you're better off doing more sets of less exercises. When you're doing high reps, you're better off doing less sets but more exercises. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if I'm doing high reps for chest. I'm better off doing five exercises, two sets each, mm. for example. If I'm doing strength and low reps, I'm better off doing two exercises, but maybe five five sets each instead to right. practice the skill right. and strength. Right. And it just occurred to me. I was like, it should be communicated. Well, I'll tell show. you what I'm really excited for is I saw the, the final work that uh, Justin's been putting into the webinar, and I saw some of the work what he was doing with Doug, and I'm pumped oh, for that. Oh, that's so good. I mean, we had such a great response from the Prime Pro webinar, and uh, I know that it's been needed for a long time for us to do Prime because so many people confuse the two of those. Yeah. And uh, it was cool to watch uh, you guys go through that and how, what it, what a difference just you teaching a single priming movement to Doug did. So Dude, that was great. If, if you work out and you know that it takes you two, three sets, 15, 20 minutes to get into the workout, get in the groove, really feel the maximum effects of a workout, a simple 10-minute priming session that's mm-hmm. – individualized because you have to prime your body differently than someone else uh, who may have different issues. That's going to do it for you. And you jump right into your workout with, with much better connection and form. People don't get that. So uh, I'm hoping that this webinar, people follow along test themselves before, do the stuff that you're showing them, and then test themselves afterwards. It's such a feel thing. Yeah. And I think that's why everybody was so stoked the first time, you know, when you're doing the Prime Pro webinar, you just, you really have to go through it to experience it. We could talk about it all day long about the benefits, which we try to do. We try to demystify uh, that process, but to be able to kind of set aside time and really feel your way through it and see where your body is deficient, but now you can, you know, you can really like improve these things almost immediately by doing a few simple exercises it's really powerful oh it's huge and is it is the site the same place Doug are they still going to maps uh, let's go to mapsprimewebinar.com so maps prime webinar and then you can sign up for it and it's basically a class so right. mm-hmm. Justin is going to take you through a priming yeah. How to prime your body class. So before your workout, you, you will be idea. tested. And you yeah. should let people know too, because a lot of people get, uh, ask me this question after ours that I or the one that I did is if you can't make 
one of the times to the live uh, event of it, you then what you can do is register and you'll actually automatically get emailed a replay. Is that right, Doug? That's correct. So so make sure even if like the times that we're doing it, you can't make it still register because then you'll still get it. First question is from Tom LeBlanc. Official, is getting 10,000 steps in one shot any better or worse than getting those 10,000 steps throughout the day? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, it's actually probably better throughout to, the day to spread them out. Now, if your goal is to improve your stamina and endurance, let's say you want to compete in something that requires you to like you know wear yourself out and push yourself, then you want to mimic that kind of competition with your training somewhat, right? So some of the benefits of doing all 10,000 steps in one shot would be you're going to push stamina and endurance a little more. But in terms of longevity, fat burn, muscle sparing, you're better off spreading out throughout, throughout the whole day. And there are studies that support this. There are studies that have compared two 30-minute sessions of cardio to one 60-minute session of cardio. And they, they do allude to the fact that the two 30-minute sessions – tend to burn more body fat and tend to preserve uh, more muscle. So spreading it out is probably your best bet. I would also make the case for energy and mood too. I mean, uh, doing one hard bout of 10,000, basically that's like running for an hour, right? Or mm. about an hour, a little over an hour or so. Uh, if doing it and then you're done. And then if you have rest of your day, you were sedentary. Like let's say you did that at five o'clock in the morning, right? And right. then all day long, you're pretty much sedentary mm -hmm. the rest of the day. Uh, your energy levels, your overall mood, I think, would be greatly improved if you took that same amount and you broke it up over, you know, instead of two, even 30 minute sessions, forget that, just walking mm. 15 minutes on the hour, every hour mm -hmm. for the whole day. Just, Way more productive. Yeah. Just getting up and, and getting blood flow. And I think that what that would do for your, your mood and energy, I would make the case it's also better too. Yeah. Yeah. I've just seen too uh, where companies have found when they give more of these short breaks for, for activity and for them to go out and you go for a walk and, uh, you know, do things physically, like coming back to, you know, get back on task. Uh, they found, you know, workers have been a lot more productive. Uh, it just, it just re-stimulates, uh, you know, cognitive function, you get all these benefits to it. So it's something that I think, I think just spreading it out throughout the day is just a, a lot better strategy, but I can understand if you are trying to really press yourself endurance wise, like you have to have a spe specific goal for that. Yeah. Behaviorally speaking, because remember a lot of this advice, uh, you know, I talked about the studies, we talked about which one probably works a little better, but a lot of my opinion is also based off of just my experience training people, um, everyday people. And behaviorally speaking, if you can attach some walking to other daily rituals, you're far more likely to do it long term. So what does that look like? Well, an example would be um, after breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I walk for 30 minutes. Now, because I attached it to three things that I already do every single day, I always have breakfast, I always have lunch, I always have dinner. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ritualize something else to something that I already do, which is the eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So now I'm going to walk 30 minutes after each one. The odds that I'm going to maintain that and keep it consistent long-term are much higher. Spreading out your activity works that way. It just does. If I tell a client to, and it sounds like it wouldn't be that way, right? If I told a client, hey, devote one hour to working out versus, hey, do 20 minutes of exercise after each meal or after uh, you know things you do, you would think, oh, the one hour carved out, somebody could stick to that more long term. It actually doesn't work that way. In practice, people are far more likely to be consistent when it's kind of spread out through, throughout the day, especially when it's attached to things that they do on a regular basis. So, you know, generally speaking, you're better off getting the 10,000 steps throughout the day, integrating it into your life than you are doing it all in one shot. But if you were to compare them and they were consistent and they were perfect in terms of results, you probably would still see better results from a fat loss, a muscle preserving standpoint with the spread out. But it's it's not a huge difference, but you probably would still see a difference. Next question is from DJ's 20, EAAs versus BCAAs. Are they both useless for the average gym goer? I'm, this, glad, I'm glad you grabbed this because I've had a bunch of people DM me about this. Yeah, that, this is still a thing, which is what, uh -huh. okay, so, so, so essential EAA stands for essential amino acids. The reason why they're called this, so there's two essential macronutrients. Uh, we have three macronutrients, right? Proteins, fats, and carbs. 
Only two of them are essential, meaning you have to consume them for your body to just function. And in fact, if you avoid them for long enough, uh, you can actually starve. And those are fats and proteins. Fats and proteins are essential. In fats, you have essential fatty acids. They're essential because your body has to, you have to eat them in order to get them. Your body can't create them. With proteins, proteins are made up of amino acids. There are non-essential amino acids that your body can actually make. And then there are essential amino acids that your body can't make. You have to consume them. They're essential. Okay, so that's what EAA is. Branch chain amino acids are three of those essential amino acids. So there's, there's 10 essential amino acids. The branch amino acids are three of those. And those three have been shown to do special things in the body. So what do supplement event manufacturers and, and what does the industry do? They say, oh, these are essential amino acids. You have to eat them. Oh, branched amino acids have special properties, especially when it comes to recovery and, and muscle building. So if you just supplement with them, then you're going to get you know better muscle building uh, re results and better recovery. This is true if your protein intake is low. If your protein intake is low, supplementing with either one of these, you'll notice benefits. If your protein intake is high, if you're eating you know, 0.6 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight, if you have a normal body weight, if you're obese, then you want to use your, your what would be considered normal body weight for your height. If you're eating that much protein, any additional amino acids uh, do nothing. You're getting the max benefit that you're going to get from amino acids and supplementing with them doesn't do anything extra for you. And the studies are consistent. When you give branched amino acids to vegans uh, who, who typically consume low protein or essential amino acids, they do better. They recover faster. They tend to build more muscle. When you give these amino acids to people who eat a high protein diet, it's like, you know, you guys ever seen that meme where there's the the he's dumping the water on his head. Yeah, he's, in, he's in the pool and he's yeah. throwing water on his head. Yeah, it's 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 not going to do anything extra for you for supplementing with them. So you know, it's it's kind of a waste. And it's it's by the way, amino acids were some of the first bodybuilding supplements ever to hit the market. They were some of the first. You know, first they sold protein, and the very next thing that they started selling was they started saying amino acids. And for whatever reason, every five years or so, it, it falls out of favor, and then it comes back in favor with some new person who's saying, this is the greatest thing. If they're not new, they've been around forever, we studied them for very long. If you have high protein diet, it's a waste of money. So what do you say to somebody? Because the, the argument that somebody would make is that, well... You know, I keep them on hand then in case I don't hit my protein intake for the day, and then I make sure I take them at the end of the night in case I don't hit my protein. Just take protein. Then that's the, that's how I respond to somebody. Yeah, it, one it, scoop of of whey protein or one scoop of uh, if you, let's say you're vegan or you don't like dairy because it bothers you, so you go with the Organifi complete protein. One scoop of that, right? Let's say it's 15 grams of protein. 15 grams of protein is is 1,500 milligrams of amino acid. And a large part of that are essential amino acids and branched amino acids. You know, three branched amino acid tablets or one scoop of branched amino acids or essential amino acids isn't going to come close to a scoop of your protein powder. Which one is cheaper, protein powder or essential amino acid supplements? If you compare them on a dosage basis, protein powder is cheaper. Because in order to get essential amino acids, what, here's what the companies are doing. They're going to protein sources. Yeah, extracting. And then they're separating them. It's, it's, it's more steps to create a, an inferior product. So, you know, again, if you have low protein intake and you struggle with that, and for whatever reason you don't want to supplement with a protein powder and you like the taste of your, you know, lemonade-flavored watermelon, whatever, you know, BCAA. You know, yeah. Watermelon, then, dude. Then, yeah, yeah then, then then I guess that's fine, but it's not going to benefit you. It's not going to do anything for you if your protein intake is high. So they market it a lot mm -hmm. because we know what amino acids do. They have important roles in the body. Essential amino yeah. acids, extremely important. Great margins for the supplement company. <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah. But again, if you if, if, if they're, they're important, but if you're getting... There's a point where you get enough and more does nothing. It's like vitamins. You know, it's like, you know, vi you know vitamin C is great for immune mm. system. Okay, does that mean taking, you know, a million mm. times the normal I'm just dose? piss it out. Yeah, it's not going to benefit you anymore. Same thing with carbs. I, I remember uh, in the, I'd say probably 15 years ago, uh, carb supplements were actually popular. Remember this? When you would buy a carbo load or, mm -hmm. you know, these drinks. And it's because athletes knew that carbs gave you energy for sports. 
And so this is before all for before people thought carbs made you fat, right? So athletes, bodybuilders would actually buy carbo load or carbo whatever yeah, I remember. drinks because oh carbs give me energy and then therefore more is gonna give me, you know, more and yeah, it doesn't it doesn't work that way. So amino acids, uh supplementation, um essential and, and branching waste of money if your protein intake is high. If your protein intake is low and you don't want to take protein powder, then yes, you'll benefit from them. Next question is from Jay Muscle. What do your wives' training programs look like right now? I'm sure they're swamped with kids at home, and I would love to hear how each of them trains now versus as they versus as they normally do. Oh boy! Hmm. Well, mine's doing uh, aesthetic right now, actually. Like oh, that's what Katrina's doing. Right yeah, now. so she's she's really enjoying that, and we do have the setup. Uh, thankfully, through our PRX uh, fold-out um, squat rack and dumbbells, and so I mean, it's it's a minimal. Uh, we don't have machines, obviously, but so there's some components to that that you know we've used machines before for uh, aesthetic. But in terms of those focus sessions, you can replace a lot of that with the barbells and the dumbbells, and uh, you know get just as good of a, a workout out of it. So she's been having a really good time with that and and reaping you know a lot of the gains with that. So uh, next thing is really just the nutrition piece to, to nail down uh, for her. But uh, that's that's been the big focus right now. I, obviously, going into summer, I think that's something that uh, a lot of people are, are kind of looking into mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, so Je- Jessica's pregnant, right? So we're I'm training her according to how she feels, um, and she trains herself a lot of the times. Usually what it looks like is uh, full bo- like compound movements, maybe three to four, every other day. So she'll pick maybe three or four compound movements every other day. And then every other day, so the days after, she'll pick three or four isolation movements. And so she's working out about five to six days a week. Uh, you know, one day compound movements, the next day isolation movements. And we're paying close attention to how she feels, how she braces her core. Right now, uh, squatting feels really good to her, actually more so than split stance exercises because her belly kind of gets in the way with the split stance type of stuff. Um, incline presses, laying flat on her back, doesn't feel super, super good. Um, pull-ups uh, don't feel too great because it's stre- it feels she feels like she gets strain in her midsection because it's already stretching out. So we're using the – I have a, a, a squat rack, and it's got a cable on the top, so we'll do pull-downs or we'll do cable rows. Um, but really just focusing on maintaining strength uh, and muscle so that her metabolism is, is, is amped for, you know, when the baby's born. So Katrina, uh, recently just transitioned to maps aesthetic. She finished, uh, maps anabolic, but you know, that's a, what a good week looks like. And I think this person's searching for more of like, you know, I'm not going to tell you like the, per- the perfect week, right? The perfect week is she's going through maps aesthetic, like literally exactly what's in the program. But mm-hmm. the reality is it looks a lot of times like this, like, she may get two lifts in a week. And when she does that, she's been, you know, I've, I've coached her on, you know, if you, if you know, you're not going to get the the full program instead of just following one of those days when it's designed for four or five or more days, uh, focus on the movements that we we've constantly been working on and practicing. And those are the big lifts. So she, a lot of times may go in and you may see her just do some mobility work, uh, especially since that's fresh in her mind because we just did the Prime Pro webinar and she followed along with her family and stuff. So she might spend, you know, 15, 20 minutes doing Prime Pro type of work and then just squat or just deadlift or just overhead press. So I've got her now doing stuff like that that she probably didn't do that before in the past. You know, the way, way past when we first met, she kind of did her own thing. And then finally I got her into like le- legit programming and then she would follow whatever I had going for her, then maps came along, and then she would follow every program to a T, then getting pregnant happened, and there was a lot of inconsistency with her training. And so that's when I started talking to her about, listen, the biggest bang for your buck is when you do these big compound lifts. So spend the time doing that. And then the other time of her exercise would be walking. Her and I walk a lot right now. I mean, every day uh, we're putting in at least an hour to two hours of walking together. Sometimes all of that in one shot, sometimes that broken up in 30, 45 minute bouts. But, uh, you know, we've been really good about, and I've been back to wearing my Fitbit. And so I've been over 10,000 steps every day. So is she, and that's been kind of what we've been hitting as our markers. Like, okay, let's make sure we get enough steps in every day that we're walking enough to hit over 10,000. If we get to the gym and we can lift, we're making sure that we're getting our big compound lifts. And then our eating is adjusted, you know, because, 
we both know that we're not training like we were three, four years ago. Uh, you know, diet is, is, is definitely pulled back on calories. So her and I are only eating, you know, two times, maybe three times in the day. Um, and that's what it looks like. So on a inconsistent week, which I would say happens more often. Uh, she's not following aesthetic to a T. She's doing things like that. If it's a great week for her, then she's following the program to a T. Yeah, actually, I mean, you kind of reminded me about a couple things priming wise. Like we've had to do a lot of work uh, on bracing and, and getting proper core connectivity because of uh, past back problems and back injuries. And so, uh, you know, there's a lot of that that I had to kind of go through and help to kind of coach and, and teach and ritualize uh, because she hated doing any kind of mobility drills, uh, just wants to get into the workout. I know a lot of people can relate to that, but uh, in, in terms of like being able to then uh, prime ahead of time and to enable to get into the actual like workouts and go do the workouts to the T uh, required a lot of, of prime work ahead of time with uh, you know, certain techniques, uh, the wall tests uh, for, for one, and then also with the windmill, just really learning to uh, be able to maintain that tension throughout and embrace and support while also rotating the spine and, and getting through movement like that. So that's been like really, uh, you know, a key factor with her improving, being able to build off of that as well. Next question is from CD Champs 17. In honor of Mother's Day, what's one thing that your mother instilled in you when you were young that you're grateful for today? Ooh. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Talk about the moms. Yeah. You know, one thing my mom did uh, when I was a kid is she always allowed uh, us to have an opinion. Um, and she would allow us to discuss and argue our points which, you know, I could see some parents saying, oh, that's not a good thing because, you know, you, you just got to – you say what, you know, what the rules are and that's the way it is or whatever. And uh, I, it wasn't like I, I was – I won. Uh, sometimes I did, but usually I didn't. But she allowed the me to feel like I had a say and to discuss and debate with my mom. And it's – you know, this was very valuable looking back because I still respected her. But it made me feel like I had a say, and it helped me sharpen uh, my voice, it helped me sharpen kind of how I can discuss and, and learn things, you know. And um, and looking back, I'm really, really grateful on that kind of stuff. I mean, we would – I remember, you know, I, you guys know I, I played the trumpet for a few years in, in, as a kid, right, in, in uh, elementary school. I forgot all and about then, that. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> Big horn blower. Oh, yeah. And uh, trumpets. shut up. You had you yeah. play the saxophone. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 you know, I, st I did it. I convinced her I wanted to do it. My parents bought me the, you know, Bach, you know, trumpet. They're expensive. They're expensive. You know, because it costs like five hundred bucks. Hmm. And I did it, and I didn't like it after the first year. Mm -hmm. And I talked to her about it. And I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. She's like, Well, we invested the money. You made the commitment, so we got it. Whatever. So it was like this discussion that we would have. Now I didn't. Of course, she didn't let me like whine and complain about it, but she would let me talk about it, and we'd have these debates and discuss discussions. By the time I got to seventh grade, I had this music teacher that I just could not stand. I couldn't. This lady, nobody liked this lady. It wasn't great, and so I actually uh, sat her down and I said, "You know, I said, Mom, you you really want me to do well in all of my classes? You want me to perform well in school?" And she says, "Yeah, I do." And I said, "Well, the the, the stress of taking this class." Is affecting the, and so I put up this great argument, you know, this great uh, y y point that I had. And my mom smiled and she says, That's a really good point. She says, You still have to finish the year, but I like that you, that you presented yourself that way. So we'll talk about it at the end of the year. And I, I was able to quit afterwards. But she allowed me to have that, that say, which I think is part of, you know, now has become kind of part of, of who I am. And I appreciate that. Hmm. Yeah. I, well, I'm trying to think. Like we've, We've definitely had our, our battles back and forth, my mom and I, but we, I know like now looking back, like some things that were really great that she instilled in me were uh, very much like the creative outlets. Like she would, again, ex expose me to music, expose me to, you know, crafts and, and uh, we'd spend a lot of time really building and, 
and exploring things and drawing and like I was, it, my mom is very, very artistic and uh, she still kind of expresses that a lot through costuming and, and lots of stuff like that and different projects and just getting herself involved in things. And um, that's definitely where that comes from for me in terms of just exploring ideas and then uh, creating them and, and, you know, like figuring out that whole process and how to improve and, and just come up with ideas. And, and so she was real instrumental with that. Uh, the other part of it was like, just very fiery. She's a redhead, you know, like is, is very like, if, if somebody was messing with me, like it'd say it was a teacher that like, she felt like was, uh, you know, come like giving me a bad grade for something that I didn't deserve, which did happen a few times. Like, one of them was uh, I was actually being a uh, I was a TA uh, for for a teacher at as a goof. This is kind of an, an off track story, but uh, I, I used to like mess with this teacher all the time in class. I was like the class clown with this with my other friend, and she'd kick us out all the time, like out of class. And this is just something that we were just like you know I could understand why she didn't like me, and so I thought it'd be funny to be her TA and do everything like perfect but i knew she hated the fact that i was there with her right and so and so i was just there to be annoying and um and so this whole semester like i'm i'm doing everything she possibly could have wanted you know me to do or whatever and then she gave me like a, a c or like a c minus or whatever she couldn't as get, a teacher's aide yeah <laughs> Yeah, just to be. A, I've never even heard anyone getting a C for a teacher. Aid. Right, you're just being a bitch. <laughs> That's supposed to be an easy A. Dude. Exactly. That's what I was banking on that easy A, right? And so I'm like, ah, whatever, you know. Like that's I passed. obviously she hated me, you know. That's fine. My mom like got this wild hair and just like went down there and then just like let her have it and then like <laughs> got her to 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 change the grade. And I so I had to be really careful about what I told my mom. Is is the point? Like she was just very. Uh, like w would would go out to battle anybody on behalf of her family. She's very like loyal, protective, like, and so that that's something like I do I do share that, but I, I had to be real <laughs> real careful because what I would tell her in terms of like you know any of these other teachers or, or things that would come up and and arise because I'd be like I don't want you to go down there and do nothing about it, you know, mom, I got this. Uh, but uh, yeah, that I mean, that's for the most part. Uh, you know, dude, I, you reminded me of a story. I, I my mom never <clears throat> cursed, never. In fact, as adults now, if she says shit, which is rare, mm -hmm. my siblings and I are all like, "Oh my god, mom said a bad word." <laughs> but when I was a kid, never, except for one time. Uh -huh. I remember I was sitting. I was young. I must have been like seven. You know, sitting in the front seat is before anybody gave a shit. So your kid sitting, you can sit in your lap while you drive. Nobody cared. Yeah. But I'm sitting in the driver's side, on the passenger side. And my mom goes to take off at the at the stop sign, and a truck almost hits us, slams the brakes, and you know protective mode. My mom, right, protective mode. She rolls the window down, and the guy's looking at her, and it's like in the heat of the moment. And my mom goes, "Fuck you, motherfucker!" And I, <laughs> whoa, You're like zero Your cuss mom? words to that, dude. Wow. Dude, I heard that at my mom's mouth, and I was like, "Whoa, that was powerful!" Z zero to mf. I was quick. like. Whoa. <laughs> And then the dude yeah, drove she went by. For the big words. Yeah, yeah, and she's driving. I'm like, Mom, you said a lot of bad words. She's like, <laughs> He really made me angry. She didn't say anything else. But I remember. I'll never forget that because that's such a weird thing for my so mom. So much more powerful when you never hear it. Oh my uh, gosh, yeah. that's hilarious. Uh, my mom uh, definitely is responsible for my moral foundation and uh, my faith for sure. So the, uh, that is uh, came from her. Uh, she instilled in that in me at a very young age. And uh, no doubt, as, as, as challenging of a childhood as I may have had, uh, she probably had as challenging, if not more challenging. So I also got a lot of my grit from my mom. So the ability to overcome adversity, um, as all the things that we had, we'd gone through, I never felt like um, my mom sat on her hands and was like, oh, poor me, poor us. It was always like, we're going to get through this. We're going to be okay. We're fine. And she always had this resiliency and this faith that was unbelievable because we did. We always made it. We survived. We were fine. Um, and no matter what, whether we were bouncing from house to house or dealing with my dad dying and then me, being in an abusive relationship, all these things that she went through, uh, she always got back up again. And my mom was somebody who ended up getting her degree like in her 40s. So she later in life finished her degree and, and finally per finished what her all her lifelong dream was. As long as I could remember, 
my mom wanted to be this teacher. <clears throat> then she was always going, chipping away at school while she was also trying to raise five kids and work through a husband dying and then being in an abusive relationship and bouncing around from town to town. And the fact that she still, you know, persevered through all that, made it, and uh, has got a great life for herself now, loves what she does for a living. Um, if it wasn't uh, for her, there's no way that I probably would have uh, the ambition and probably the grit that I have. I definitely have that running through me, and I'm for sure that came from my yeah, mom. Yeah, if, if you really mm -hmm. think about it, moms really have such a, a huge role in shaping society. Because, And I don't think sometimes they don't get credit because they're not the Elon Musks of the world or the Bill Gates or the whatever. But when you really think about it, you know, and statistically they'll show this, moms – statistically spend far more time with their children than fathers do. That's been historic mm -hmm. throughout most, well, I guess, all of recorded human history. This has been pretty much true in every, almost every civilization. Even today with our society where, you know, the, the roles are not nearly as clear defined as they were before. They still spend far more time. It's still far less likely for a mom to, to not be present with their kids than a dad or whatever. So they play very important roles in shaping uh, our societies, and so I, I think they don't get they get they can get all the credit in the world, and they still don't get enough credit. Yep. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides and resources. They're all free. You can also find your favorite podcast hosts ever on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal. Adam at Mind Pump Adam. And by the way, Doug also has an Instagram page. He shows you all the behind the scenes stuff. The equipment we use the when we record the podcast, tech. the cameras, uh, how frustrating it is for him to deal with us uh, as uh, his partners. Uh, go on Mind Pump Doug, at Mind Pump Doug on Instagram. Check it out.